One thing I've noticed in our community is there can be a resistance to the idea that we're still healing our childhood. And the Zs always say, well, no, it doesn't work like that. Time is not linear from a soul perspective. We're constantly spiraling through things. So for example, let's say at the age of 15, you had a very traumatic event around being shamed or silenced, or perhaps you were shamed for something you did or said. And so it stopped that part of you that had taken an action or said something, you shut that down. Well, at 24, you might go through a replay of that shame lesson and some other scenario in your life might come up again and trigger that wound. And when the wound gets triggered, the question is, how conscious are we that we're in a wound or that we're operating from a wound? You know, the easiest way to shut down would be to, to start going, oh my God, I can't believe they shamed me, da da da, and just kind of start pointing the finger at the outside perpetrator or just be upset and sad. And again, pointing the finger at the outside perpetrator. But actually, if we can go beyond that and we can sit with ourselves for a second and go, when did I feel this feeling before? And how historical is this for me? So you might start to notice at the age of 15, at the age of 24, at the age of 32, at the age of 46, at the age of 53, you went through some big lessons around shame. And if you look at your 15 and your 53 year old self, you can go, wow, my 53 year old, I'm so, I'm so proud of you. You've transformed the energy around shame that compressed you. When you were 15, it devastated you. And it's taken you six rounds of that lesson to get to this point. And the way the Z's explain it is that's us recovering our own life force. Because that was pure expression in us at 15. And we may have done absolutely nothing wrong but we were shamed for it because someone else judged what we said, what we did, and we carried the impact of that shame into silencing ourselves. So one of the things the Z's have said to me, which made a lot of sense for me, and I share it because it's universal, it's not that personal. They've said that if I had been as a child who I was destined to be as an adult, it would have been very difficult for me. It would have caused complications it wouldn't have gone so well. There are reasons that we wait to reveal aspects of ourselves to ourselves or unfurl them into our life. So that's also why we shouldn't let the ego mind judge our childhood healing. Because the ego mind will go, oh God, am I, still, am I still trying to get over that? Well, you weren't ready to get over it before. So now there are circumstances in your life and your growth that are allowing you to heal that. That's beautiful. There has to be a certain amount of love, trust, safety for us to heal. So it's quite common. I'll use the example of romantic relationships, although you could apply this to friendship, uh, your relationship with a loving animal that you have a real kinship and kindred spirit connection with, but I'll, I'll use romantic relationships. It's quite normal if you get into a really good relationship with somebody where you feel safe, respected, seen and heard, and you know that there's a baseline of love in the relationship. It's quite normal that when you get into that good relationship, you go through a power healing of all of the prior relationships where you were playing out perhaps somewhat difficult or challenging or even in the extreme, abusive dynamics. So it takes being in the energy of love and goodness and a certain amount of wholeness in our energy field for us to start letting go of some of the more compressed wounds. So this is something the Z's have really educated me on and, and I've noticed they've been talking to me this way about it for 15, 20 years. I now am able to see it faster and notice that pattern happening for all of us. So Healing is a good thing, but the difference between healing and re-traumatization is something to pay attention to. So what I mean by that is there have been times in my life when I was going through really tough stuff and having to recover from some really tough, I would say compacted emotional stuff. 
and I needed a lot more support. It wasn't as simple as, oh, I'm just healing something. The emotions could come up, the thoughts could come up. It could kind of disable me for a while. So if you feel like you're not making any progress, so you're listening to me going, yeah, it's all well and goodly, but I feel like I'm just going around in circles, then whatever the issue is for you, as much as you can identify it, maybe you go, you know what, it is shame. I constantly live in fear of being shamed and it's stopping me speaking my truth, it's stopping me do what I do. First of all, brilliant that you've identified that. Or maybe you haven't identified what the feelings are or the state is, but you know who the person was or what the event was. And every time you think of that person or you think of that event, your body kind of goes into a freeze or goes into a reaction. It's, it's okay that that's happening, but if you notice the progress is very slow or you feel like you're not getting anywhere and you're going around in circles, this is the time to put that area of your life under the microscope and to go, okay, I'm gonna make 2022 my year of tackling this head on. I'm not gonna try and do it alone because that's hard. And clearly the fact that I keep hitting walls with this area, it's something I really need to give my focus to. So I'm going to, I'm gonna work with, I'm gonna try a therapist, try and find a therapist I think could work on this with me. I'll also go for some um, trauma body-based healing. I will read as much as I can about people who've been through this kind of scenario that I went through. Really give yourself to it because healing is faster than ever before. And the only reason you might be struggling with that is that the trauma that you've got is bigger than you can handle by yourself. And so this is the time to really put all the right kind of supports around it. So rebirth would be one of your healing aspects. But if you have something chronic, it's going to require more than rebirth can give you, and that's true of anything in life. You know, I'm very much the kind of person, I've never been a one-way kind of person. I'm a big believer in learn from sources and people and different methods, especially if it's an area where I can feel I'm a little held back or I've got some healing to do. And when you start putting that support in your life and in place, things can really start to move. Things can really start to heal. Hello friends, this is Lee and you just watched a clip from one of my Rebirth 2022 modules. I hope it was helpful to you in these times that we're in. And just to let you know that even though the live part of Rebirth is currently underway and the live modules we do are currently happening, when you sign up for Rebirth, you get all access to the video replays, transcripts, worksheets, the whole kit and caboodle. So there's about 10 hours worth of material to give you a chance to reflect, go inward, and cast forward your intentions and your dreams for the next 12 months. It's all available to you for lifetime access from whenever you sign up. So we'd love to see you over at Rebirth and you can check out the link underneath this video for all details at the Rebirth 2022 page. Big love.